Valens Research, Uniform Financial Analytics. For Transdime, there's an operating business, which is, right, let me just actually pull up Transdime to give you a visual, right? In a weird way, when you think about Transdime, you should model two businesses. You really shouldn't model one business, you should model two. One business is an incredibly stable, high ROA firm um, that is actually having ROAs that are very, very stable, right? Except for here, when they basically made one large acquisition, Astroline, which pulled down returns because <clears throat> they're, they're still integrating it. But for the most part, a stable, high ROA business, which you would almost model to say, hey, the organic Transdime business has basically no growth, right? Because what they do, what Transdime does, for those of you who don't know, is basically they buy an aerospace and defense firm once its products have been designed into um, a... Uh, once its products have been designed into a, um, a, an aircraft, right, be it a 787 or an Airbus A350, et cetera, and basically that they know that that company has visibility for the next foreseeable future, right? Really for the next um, 20 to 30 years, they have an order book that they know this company is going to have and have demand for. And so they have high visibility and so they can pay high multiples as a private equity buyer. But those companies, once they buy them, they basically can largely think of those as annuities, right? They're not going to grow a lot because the install base is already there, but they are going to have incredibly steady demand. So you almost model the core legacy part of Transdime as a 40% ROA business with 0% growth. And then what you have to do separately is you have to say, hey, if I think that Transdime is going to grow their business by about, you know, basically they're going to acquire another 10% of their business each year. But here's the important thing. The kicker is they're going to acquire that business at close to cost of capital returns, right? What they're basically going to do is they're going to acquire that business, but they're going to have to pay a premium to get that, right? And so what you can do is you can basically add back. And if you remember, we said that that part of the business, right, with that the first part of the business was worth, call it a 20% discount. I'm actually just do this really quickly. 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 0, 0, 0, 0. Right, and that part of the business had an implied EV of 32 billion. Right now, if I look at that, so 32 billion for the EV of the business, which meant a market cap, right, of 15.8. Now, separately, let's look at what the implied EV of that other business is: six, 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 six. And I'm going to grow at 10% a year. So that says that the implied EV of that part of the business separately is another five billion. Right, so five billion plus 15 billion gets me to 20 billion. Lo and behold, the current market cap of Transdime is about 20 billion. Right? I just back the envelope. I actually had no opinion on Transdime. I was just basically a rough approximation of what realistically the company's done historically. And that basically says, hey, the market gets Transdime, but that's the right way to think about an inquisitive business. The right way to think about an inquisitive business isn't to say, hey, we should lump all that goodwill into the operating business. It's to really break apart the two parts of that business, an organic business and an inquisitive business and look at them. And that's how, that's how we would think you should look at it. And that just quickly on the fly is a way that we can model it. The next question we got um, is, does your, does your analysis work for private companies? The short answer is yes. The long answer is yes, if we get the data, right? So for private companies, what's really important is we obviously don't have access to a ton of private company data, right? Private companies do not publish their financial statements. Those that do generally don't publish it under GAAP. They publish it under what's called ACBOA other comprehensive forms of basically financial statements. Um, and so that's things like cash-based accounting, tax-based accounting. So what we actually have to do is when we take a private company, which we've done this many times for clients, both investors um, and, um, and consultants, et cetera, is we take that data, we convert that data to uniform accounting also, which takes a couple more steps. It's much more... Um, uh, basically, uh, uh, if you will, work intensive, right? Manual intensive work than the traditional way that we can do this for, for public companies. But we take that and we can actually make the exact same adjustments. And then we can look at a company and compare it, right? A private company to its public company peers to understand is it better or worse? What's the benchmarking and what's the company really worth? Valens Research, the world's leading source for uniform financial analytics.